earlier this year, my hearing took quite a turn for the worse. And earlier on in the summer, I was told that I was um, eligible for a cochlear implant. I started to lose my hearing in my early 20s. At the time, there wasn't much wrong with my hearing. They just picked up that I'd lost a lot of high pitch, but I could still um, understand speech very easily. But they told me that my hearing loss was likely to get worse over time. And that is exactly what's happened. It's just gradually got worse and worse. I decided I needed to look into having hearing aids when I started to be aware that I was struggling to hear people if they weren't looking at me. And I think those hearing aids helped with that and they were great. But then this year, it, they've, um, they've not been enough. It was quite clear that it wasn't the hearing aid that was the problem. It was the fact that uh, something significant had changed about my hearing and the uh, you know, there was going to have to be, hopefully, a different answer. I think the implant is my only hope at this point. Um, I've been told that hearing aids aren't going to do anything more to help me. So the implant was the only option, really, going forward. I'm very happy with that. Izzy and I come here quite regularly. It's a great walk from the village. And when you've been having a bad hearing day, then it's quite therapeutic to go out with somebody that doesn't want to talk to you. They're just a companion. It's a place we return to a lot. In January of this year, I had the flu and it ended up that I got fluid behind both of my eardrums. My hearing just went completely. I couldn't hear anything. And it was hugely upsetting because I thought, right, is this it? Has it just gone now? And gradually my hearing came back, but it never came back to the level it had been before Christmas. The ability to just have casual conversations with people has gone, and, and, and that's hugely upsetting. And it's been particularly upsetting with my husband because Nadja is a very funny person. He likes the quick quip. He likes a bit of banter. He likes a joke. And um, I can't follow that anymore. I just can't do it. So he can't be like that with me. It's, it's as hard on him as it is with me. Hang on, what did you say something? Yeah, we saw a barn owl and two deer this morning. It's made just that ordinary day-to-day -day interaction so difficult and put so many barriers up to it. You know, I feel, I feel a strong and a huge sense of loss, a huge sense of loss. A few weeks ago, we went out to eat in the evening with some friends. We were around their house. The four of us were, you know, sat round as you do, chatting or trying to in my case. And suddenly some conversation actually started that I wasn't able to follow. And it was obviously very funny because comments were going back and forward and people were laughing. And Nigel was laughing uproariously and taking a big part in it. And I was just watching because I couldn't, because I didn't know what they were talking about. And I watched my husband, I watched Nigel, and I thought, that's who he is. That's my husband, but he can't be like that with me. And that, that's very upsetting. Yeah. You know, it's incredibly emotional for us. You know, I, I cried. Still, it makes me tear up, you know. If there's something that you think is going to help you that's coming along, then you can keep going. And, and, but if, if you feel that it's just getting worse and it's going to get worse and there's nothing yet within reach that's going to offer help, 
then it's hard to be retain your optimism. It just feels like everything's just too difficult. But now I feel very positive about things. So bring it on. <laughs>